The Reds are back with a magnificent 4-0 win. Pep spit on that trophy, bitch, because the Reds are coming to collect it on July the 2nd. I'm absolutely buzzing after that performance. It was a performance of Champions Elect. It was a performance of vintage Liverpool calibre. Connor, how did you find it? Just absolutely flawless, really. Nothing really negative to say about it at all. Great goals as well in the game. My personal favourite was the fourth one. Look, we'll go through it bit by bit. We'll go through it moment by moment. Get your player ratings ready. Get your man of the match ready. We want to know your thoughts on the game, my friends. It was the Reds that we'd hoped to see. We weren't quite at full speed against Everton. There's no denying that. But tonight, we came back with a bang. I thought that our front three were sensational. I'll go through it in more detail. I'll give you guys my player ratings as well. I'm just going to wait for the chat to fill up a little bit because I know people are only coming back onto the stream now. It was a truly magnificent performance. Good to see Sadio Mane uh, put in a great performance. Great to see Mo Salah get back on the pitch. Andy Robertson as well. And we got to see some of the younger players. Harvey Elliott, Neko Williams getting minutes. There's just pluses all around tonight. It's very hard to find anything to be negative about. And look, why would we? There's no need to be negative when the Reds have put in a performance like that. Just a reminder to everybody that Liverpool can be crowned Premier League champions to Tomorrow, if Chelsea can take a point or three off Manchester City at Stamford Bridge. A game that we will, of course, be covering live on the channel as well. So I hope to see you with us for that one tomorrow night. But look, back to the moment at hand and back to the game at hand, my friends. Let me know who your man of the match was in the chat. I'm going to go through my player ratings now in a second. Then I'm going to hand it over to Mr. Crosby to go through his player ratings as well. I haven't done the substitutes because I thought that they were all just fairly solid when they came on. Nothing too dramatic about it. But look, let me start off by going through my player ratings. I'm going to start off with the man in goal, Alisson. This was a really difficult one because he didn't have anything to do. So I've given him a 6, but it's a 6 from a point of view of him having nothing to do. So next up, Trent Alexander-Arnold. Absolutely stunner of a goal from him. Very good performance. Much better than the one he put in against Everton. I've given Trent a 7.5 in my match ratings. Joe Gomez and Virgil van Dijk both got the same score for me. Both a solid 7. I think uh, they didn't have too much to do, but what they did do, they done very well. As always, with Virgil van Dijk, he pings them magnificent diagonal balls and stuff. And Joe, I thought, looked accomplished sitting beside him. Uh, Andy Robertson at left back, I gave a 7 as well. Good performance from Robbo. You can see that we had more of an attacking threat down that left-hand side when Robbo was there. Um, he had a couple of opportunities to get a strike away as well, but a very, very solid performance from Andy Robertson. Moving into midfield now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go for uh, Fabinho first. And I'm going to give Fabinho a 9 today. Yes, a 9. He was involved in one of the, the goals before he scored as well with an assist. A scoopy dink, as we said on the stream. And then he scored that absolute worldy of a strike as well, which was lovely to see. And it was a great moment for him as well. Um, next up, I'm going to go for Jordan Henderson. I gave the captain an 8 today. A very good, accomplished Jordan Henderson performance. I thought he got round the pitch well. That's what Jordan Henderson does. Drops back, splits the centre-backs when needs be. Then pops up on the right-hand side as well. Just a, a class performance from Hendo. Gini Wijnaldum. I thought that he was good, but I didn't think he did anything exceptional today. But that being said, he didn't really put a foot wrong either. So I've given Gini Wijnaldum a 7. Uh, Mohamed Salah had a great game, as far as I'm concerned. Um, tried to set up Takumi right at the end as well. Got his goal with a very good finish. I gave Mohamed Salah an 8.5 today. Bobby Firmino. I think he may, is he struggling for a little bit of form? Is that fair to say? Bobby works hard. You get a good, solid performance out of Bobby. Everybody knows he's my favourite player at the club. I've given Bobby a 7 because I thought that he didn't do anything wrong, but his work rate was there, but he didn't do anything magnificent. Probably should have had himself a goal at one point as well. Um, Sadio Mane, for me, then is the last player I give a player rating to. I've given Sadio an 8. And my man of the match for this game was Fabinho. I thought that this was the Fabinho that we've known, uh, got to know and gotten to love. I thought it was a great performance by him. He gets my man of the match. I'm not sure who Sky actually gave the man of the match to. As I say this right now, we're looking at a replay of this Fabinho goal. Lovely little dummy by Martin Atkinson as well. Fabinho, though, what a strike. What a strike. So, look, I'm going to hand it over to Connor Crosby now for his player ratings. And, Connor, what do you give the guys? Um, yeah, pretty much along the same lines as you. Allison the six didn't really have to do anything, but we'll not so nothing really to say about him. Uh, Trent probably a yeah, seven, seven and a half. Good solid performance. Obviously scored a banger of a free kick. Uh, Gomez and Van Dijk. I went slightly different. This I went Gomez seven and Van Dijk an eight because I remember a few times where Van Dijk just kept backing off and easing players out, just calm as he like as he always does. Um, and he was obviously a threat for uh, corners as well. 
Uh, Andy Robertson, I gave a seven and a half. I think he's been like he, we missed him badly last badly, week. Yeah. Like, just that energy down the left. Just had that again today. He was looking very sharp. Uh, Fabinho, like you, I had him as man of the match at nine as well. Just like brilliant assist, fucking thunder cunt of a goal. Uh, just nothing real to say. He was just magnificent today. Um, Henderson and Wijnaldum I gave him both seven and a half just both very solid performances both did their job very well uh, Firmino yeah it's not his best day probably like a six and a half or seven just kind of bang average for his standards uh, Salah I gave an eight and I gave Mane an eight as well just very good all round performances and capped off the goal as well each and who was your man of the match? Uh, Fabinho was yeah. clearly stand out for me I think he's just magnificent Good to see a consensus from both of us there on Man of the Match. And look, ladies and gentlemen, we'd love to know your thoughts on the game as well. A guard of honour incoming at City, said Dylan Cooney. Hopefully, mate, but we, to get that guard of honour at least onto the pitch, we might get one off the pitch if we beat City, but to get one onto the pitch, we do need Chelsea to do us a favour tomorrow. And look, Connor, it's important that we point out Chelsea need to do themselves a favour as well because they're pushing for a Champions League place. Yeah, they're it's in their interest to still win. So like I could definitely see them getting some out of that game. Like it's it's not an easy place to go at the best of times. Not especially when Chelsea are like said they're chasing Champions League. Yep, and John Mack said, We're going to win the league, we're gonna win the league, and now you're gonna believe us. Does anybody ever not believe us? This is one of the first games in a long time I can remember not having to absolutely slate Martin Atkinson. We did have a couple of decisions in the first half. We should have had a penalty and nobody's going to tell me otherwise. That was a definite handball that we should have had. But look, let's go through the goals one by one. And the first one, I suppose, was Trent Alexander-Arnold's free kick. We know what a danger this young man can be from free kicks. When we put it down, when he put it down originally, I said to Connor, to me, this is probably more suited to a left foot. But then he said, nah, right foot and how right he was. Trent stepped up. And you couldn't have placed it any better, Connor. Right into the corner, beautiful strike. Yeah, like I said, I said straight away that was Trent's like prime position to be taking a free kick, and yeah, just banged it in. Like he's he hasn't done that too often, but he gets he comes close very often. It was coming like. And then the, the second goal, there was a little bit of doubt from Mohamed Salah at team at the moment about whether he was potentially offside or not. And um, it was a lovely through ball too, and Mohamed Salah did what he does well. Keeper came out, side foot of the pass, them into the corner. 2-0, we all waited with bated breath to see the replays. The replays showed that he was being played onside. Lovely finish by him. Then the third goal, Connor. I mean, what, what can we say about that strike from Fabinho? Like? It was outrageous. Like, it was just Steven Gerrard-esque. Just, was still going up when he hit the back of the net. Fucking... Absolute thunder cunt. It's the only word you can use. It was vicious. And the smile on his face. You could see Hendo when he came up to him, as Connor said during the stream. Hendo's just said, what a fucking goal when he came up to Fabinho. And, but for me, ladies and gentlemen, I think the goal of the game was the fourth goal that we scored today. Um, it was a, a perfect counter-attacking goal. It shows what our front three is all about. Sadio Mane picks up the ball inside his own half. Does well to keep the ball in play. Spins around, knocks it to Bobby Firmino. As he knocks it to Firmino, he carries on his run down that left-hand side. Firmino then immediately plays a pass to Mohamed Salah. Salah, first time from inside his own half, plays a lovely cushion pass into the run of Sadio Mane. Sadio takes his time, composes himself, puts it through the defender's legs, past Hennessy into the far post. That was counter-attacking football at its very, very best and a goal worthy of champions and a goal worthy of this group of Liverpool players we were spoiled tonight my friends we didn't quite hit the ground running against Everton we're still on for a potential 107 points in the Premier League this season give me your man of the match in the chat ladies and gentlemen we'll see if we can come to a bit of a consensus on this one uh, right what have we got missed the match uh, what have we got City won't beat Chelsea tomorrow it's all ac academic anyway said Kevin Thomas uh, that's Liverpool we know and love, the so best in the world. Stephen Booker said, yes, the fourth goal was definitely the best. Uh, perfect team goal, perfect clock team goal, said Brian Morrissey. What a performance from Fabinho, said Yassar. Uh, speaking of leagues, what's going on with the FPL? The leagues are not updating anymore. I haven't even looked at my FPL, mate, in a long time. Uh, Joa has gone for Sadio Mane for Man of the Match. Seamus Moore has gone for Fabinho as Man of the Match. Uh, Salah man of the match for Khalil and Wayne Roach has gone for Fabinho with a, a fire emoji I love that uh, man of the match and best goal for Fabinho said Dylan Cooney Fabinho was Storm Thomas's man of the match Dan's like the rest of us he doesn't want Coutinho back we don't need him back do you think we need him back Connor? don't say need exactly no but I'd, I would like a creative kind of midfielder like that Elliot Santos said this one's for the 96 Salah got the sky man of the match at Mark Nicholson thank you for that mate and um, what have we got? Sadio said Kevin and not Radio. It's okay, mate. We know what you meant. 
Uh, right, what else we got? Trent Alexander Arnold was man of the match for Oliver Morgan. Fabinho man of the match for Young Irish. Don't get in just straight. I love it, mate. Straight to the point. You'll never walk alone. And look, Connor, for you, what was the pick of the goals for you today? I think Fabinho, just the technical ability, that's right. But yeah, I do agree with you as well. Like, the fourth goal was lovely, but that has to be the third one. They were all great goals today. I mean, we were spoiled with four very, very good goals. Yeah, definitely. Like All beautiful in their own unique, weird way, but it, it's lovely to see. I mean, people often say we need a set P specialist, and, and I think people forget, one, how young Trent is, two, how unusual it is to score from free kicks. You don't like people don't score. Many scores Ronaldo. He's known as a free kick specialist. He, he scores went like none. fifty free kicks or something without scoring a goal. He has something like a four percent, isn't it? It's something ridiculous. Like it was hits the wall every time. Uh, what have you got? Fabinho said Irish scar. Hendo was doing what he does best today. Said uh, I'm bat Manope thirteen. Henderson was again at his imperious best and. It was good to see him be able to rest Jordan Henderson as well and bring some of the younger players on. Shame we didn't see Curtis Jones get some minutes. Uh, Lucy Jones said man of the match was Fabinho. Uh, Harry Longstaff has gone for Andy Robertson as man of the match. Mane's goal was poetry in motion. Poetry in motion. Tra la 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 la. You knew what was going to happen, didn't you? Uh, what have we got? Mane, goal, poetry in motion, as I said. So... Uh, Williams didn't score you can see that he wanted to he came very close Joe and it was really good footwork from him on the edge of the box and when he came on Connor Necco Williams he seemed to be all over the place I mean that in a good way I mean everywhere yeah the balls kept coming to him he's so energetic which we will get with a young player like him yeah true and Keegan put, makes a very good point like Palace would have been crying inside when Zaha went off um, it was a massive loss to them and I've got to be honest Connor I didn't see a four goal victory today against Palace because I didn't see that coming because Palace are a tough team to beat. Yeah, they're usually tough enough to break down, but um yeah, it was just we were on form, they just weren't like didn't really get forward at all. Um so yeah, we just destroyed him in the end. That was to me that was us getting our swagger back. That was us laying down the, the gauntlet and saying, Look, we are champions elect, we are the best team in this league. We'd seen Manchester City come back with, look, two very good performances, beating Arsenal 3-0 and then going to beating Burnley 5-0. It was over to the Reds today. Jurgen Klopp's men did not let us down. Uh, what else is it? The fourth goal was so beautiful, said City Fisher. Trent man of the match for Thomas McGee. This is how champions play, said Young Irish. No matter what the score is, they never let up. Uh, Chimba said that uh, Sadio Mane was his man of the match. Dave Sweeney's in the Jesus. How are you, Davo? Lovely to see you back in. Please uh, say hello to the family from us, especially your young lady, Sinead. Sinead is a, a big fan of the channel. She didn't like when I cursed the first Connor, but she's getting used to it. And she's also a massive uh, Mohamed Salah fan. Yeah, and is she a Pepsi fan as well? I think you said before. Was it before. No, she stopped her father from buying Pepsi. She was fighting the good fight, knowing that we only do Diet Coke on this channel. Uh, explain to me once again, why do we need new signs with Neko and Harvey Elliott in the wings, said Stephen Robinson. You know, it's a fair point, Stephen, but... I think we have to look at the left back um, situation and the drop off from the front three when they're not available. Nobody knows how Minamino's going to work out. We all have high hopes for him, and he could be a very good signing. Divock Origi is a good impact player, but there is a drop off, Connor, from, from Sadio, Bobby, and Mo down to what we currently have. Let's be fair. Yeah, you'd like a fourth player like to rotate between the front three just to keep up competition, if nothing else. Um, but yeah, people seem to get wrapped up in transfers a bit too much. Like, I think it's when, especially when Liverpool aren't playing, because like people forget just how good we are. But then when you actually have the football back and you're seeing these subs coming on doing well, like, like we're not in desperate need for signs. Yes, we would like some, but like we're not. It's not like we're shit if we don't sign anyone. True, true. I agree. Um, I think continuity is overlooked often at times. One of the things about that uh, Spurs team under Pochettino was that they didn't at times bring in a lot of players, but they kept the same group together. And I don't ever like to talk about Mourinho on this channel, but Jose Mourinho has spoken about his best teams throughout the years, particularly that Porto side, about keeping the group together. And that is really important. And this group haven't been together that long. Yes, there are some remnants there of older days, the likes of Lovren and stuff. But all in all, with Van Dijk and Salah and, and Firmino, and well, Firmino's been there five years in fairness, Sadio Mane, this group hasn't been together that long. And they're only entering into their prime years now. So I get what people are saying. I get both sides of this argument. But what I always come back to is Jurgen Klopp saying when he came into the club, that it is good to bring in fresh blood every now and again. It gets people to compete for their places, freshen things up a little bit as well. Um, and whoever we do bring into the club, can we really question the, the transfer business of Jurgen Klopp and Michael Edwards? They've gotten everything right. 
Uh, you're doing a great job in commentary of the game. You'll have to remove that Queen Anne chair for tomorrow. Uh, this chair's gone nowhere, mate. This is my pride and joy. But thank you for the comment, mate. Scott Mack, thank you for the super chat said. At work, mood of full time. Andy Klopp's hug, man of the match shouts. We've gone for Fabinho, mate, for our man of the match, Scott. But there were some shouts for um, Sadio Mane, some shouts for Mohamed Salah. Uh, Dylan Cooley said, I'd love to see Saka and White uh, signing with maybe a wide attacker. I can't see where Timo was going to get in that front three and not sell a grape, said Kevin Thomas. That is the thing. I mean, there's no denying that. If we're going for a strongest starting eleven, it's there's very few players in the world that could come in and demand a place in that front three. But it is a long season. We do play between 60 and 70 games and... And I suppose the word of the day is rotation. And we need to be able to rest these players at key times throughout the season, whether that's for the domestic cups, whether that's for the busy Christmas schedule. We do need to see those players get a rest. And we do have a short turnaround between the end of this uh, season and the start of next season. And that's where I think we need to be able to have two players in every position. And Connor, I mentioned the other night about the strength and depth that Manchester City had on their bench in that game against Burnley. And they didn't start with the strongest eleven, but it was a ridiculous bench. Yeah, like, they're just absolutely stacked. Like, they probably have 18 people in that squad that could easily start and not lose quality. Like, when you have... I know Sané's going to leave, but they had Sané, Mares, Sterling, Bernardo Silva, Aguero, and uh, Gabriel Jesus, and De Bruyne as well, as, like, an attacking three or four. That's ridiculous. And David Silva as well, and he's going to go, but like, that's ridiculous. They had Sterling, Sane, De Bruyne, and Jesus, I think, on the bench, Jesus starting against Crowley, if my memory's correct. Uh, Mark King said, forget tomorrow, we'd rather win the league at City and see the team's reaction. It, yeah, I get where you're coming from, and it is a difficult one, because not winning it on the pitch would be a bit strange, wouldn't it, Mark? So I get where you're coming from, but if it is sorted out tomorrow, we get that guard of honour at the Etihad, and... Um, it would be nice to go to the Eddie Had. Look, either way, it would be nice. It'd be nice to win it tomorrow. Demonetised on the stream. So. <laughs> were we? Yeah. I knew we were going to get it demonetised for all the bad language that Craig was lashing out. Sometimes that happens on then it updates, but yeah, who cares? Uh, what have we got? Keep it keep it moving. Add a few for being your man of the match with Michael Labrum. Uh, Aguero won't be playing versus Chelsea tomorrow. Yes, Sergio Aguero is probably out for the rest of the season, is, is he? I think so, yeah. I think he, had a, he had a successful knee operation, I think it was, in Barcelona. Um, he's definitely ruled out with the game tomorrow. He's definitely ruled out of the game against us at the Etihad on July the 2nd. And Again, that game still hasn't been confirmed as actually being at the Etihad, but all signs point to the fact that with the Merseyside derby going off as well as it did, Connor, and it was great to see that like the fans from both clubs did respect what they were asked to do by the, the police and the local government. Yeah, it was just a big fuss over nothing in the end. It's like, like we're, they're not idiots. They're not going to just congregate outside the ground for no fucking reason. Like, like you said, you said a lot of times, common sense just prevailed. Thank God. Yeah, and it was, again, another... And for me, it was another cheap shot of football fans even thinking that they need to be vilified once again because we've seen people congregating all over the country and not just England, the UK, all over Ireland as well. People are out and about and doing their thing and I'm just glad to see the football fans did the right thing as they normally do. I like to give football fans credit where it's due and credit to fans of both teams. Uh, do City even have fans, said Tristan? Not really, mate. Not really. Um, is he ruled out of the Champions League? I don't actually know the answer to that, City. Obviously, the Champions League is going to take place in August uh, in Lisbon by the looks of it. Okay, sorry. I said to boot somebody out of the chat. If we win the league at the Etihad... What's the rest of this? If we win the league at the Etihad, uh, which match will we lift the trophy? I think it's still Chelsea, isn't it? The last home game of the season. Somebody's asked me this a few times, but I think it is still the Chelsea game. That's at least what it was scheduled for, Connor, when, when normality was uh, taking place. Yeah, it's definitely usually the last home game, but like in these circumstances, does it really matter? Uh, no. What's, what's the idea of even the last game in there? The last home game of the season, that's usually when the trophy's presented. I, I don't know. We well, well, yeah, but like, why, why isn't it just presented whenever it's won? I don't know. I, I have no idea. We haven't uh, We haven't experienced the Premier League trophy lift yet, so... Yes. <laughs> yes, it, it's definitely incoming. Hendo shuffle. I think that's why Kloppo took him off today, so Hendo just practice sure, the yeah. shuffle. Like, you know he's getting ready for it. You know he is. Uh, Atkinson was excellent today, says Negev. I don't think he was, mate. There was a, for me, at least one penalty in the first half that he didn't give. And VAR didn't give as well, in fairness. Could have been two. There was a few instances. Yeah, there was. It was a high foot on Mo Salah that I don't know how it wasn't given. Then there was a, a Van Dijk was pulled down. Yanked, yeah. Yeah. 
And then we had the handball incident as well. Uh, Niels Bradley's gone for a 3-2 win to Chelsea tomorrow. Do you think we'll win the league tomorrow? I've got a feeling we might, mate. Because Chelsea have so much to play for, I think they might pinch a draw for Manchester City. But it's going to be a difficult game. Look, City are, are in imperious form at the minute. And they're going to go to the Etihad, or the Sanford Bridge, excuse me. And they're going to want to be, you know defend their title as long as they can. And, and make us go and win it at the Etihad, which would be... Kind of poetic if we were to go and do that. And uh, Nagab's going for a two-one win to Chelsea. Dylan, good night to you, buddy. Uh, do you reckon Klopp will play the youngsters if the title is confirmed? I don't know. I don't know, mate. See, I'm kind of on the fence about this one because a big part of me wants to break Manchester City's 100 points tally and become the team with the highest points total in Premier League history. But I can also understand the thought process of looking towards next season with the short gap. I think it's only two or three weeks or something in between the end of the current campaign and the start of the next one. So I can absolutely understand if you did play the kids. But for you, Connor, what, what would your initial thoughts be on this? On playing the kids if we win it like, or when we win it. And yeah, kind of you know introducing the kids more and more and not really worrying about the, the 101 points or whatever. Yeah, because we kind of disagree on this. You really want... like the record I'm not overly fussed I'd like I'd rather not get the 100 points but have all of our players raring to go for next season to give us the best chance of winning again so like this technically is our pre-season really like it is yeah I've been saying though in fairness all season even when we were unbeaten that that's the record that I want us to go after I didn't really care about an unbeaten season I wanted us just to put down the mo- most points because to me that's how you judge the best team the team that has put down the most points and so far Manchester City's 100 points um, is, is the most points anybody's put in a Premier League campaign and look you can talk about the Arsenal Invincibles and they absolutely deserve a special place in uh, folklore but they did drop a shit ton of points in that was it 12 or 13 12, draws 12 draws, 12 draws something mad like that uh, how do I feel about Firmino not getting many goals I don't mind it too much mate I don't really care who scores the goals for us as long as we're scoring them and Bobby Firmino's all round play, as I keep saying, allows other players to do what they do. And I love Bobby. And look, I, I say that, but I will caveat that by saying again that I don't think today was his best performance. And I, I think he is struggling for a little bit of form since he's come back, or since we've come back. Um, but look, it's, it's hard to find any negatives today when you're after going out there and blowing away Crystal Palace by four goals to nil. Uh, Evan J Fox said I feel like a mix of youngsters and starters will be the way that it'll go Chelsea should grab at least one point against City said Nelson uh, I love your streams Craig said Owen Rundle thank you mate really really appreciate that kind words uh, those kind words I should say Neko looked really good when he came on to Keegan Murphy yeah what did you make of Neko Connor I think every time I've seen him take to the pitch he, he definitely isn't lacking in confidence yeah he looked very confident very energetic um, yeah didn't exactly lose any quality when he came on should be interesting to see how he develops over the next couple of years. It's almost a shame Trent's ahead of him. Like he's that good of a talent and he probably won't get too many opportunities. Now, it'd be interesting to see if he does start to get used at left back on a few occasions as well. To if, if we don't bring in someone, say, this summer, if Klopp starts to use him as somebody who can cover both sides of the defence. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. Like, at least we have that option of trying him there. I'm, I'm very intrigued by the transfer window, I have to say. But look, today isn't about the transfer window. Today is about celebrating the fact that Liverpool have moved within touching distance of that Premier League title. Give me your thoughts on Man of the Match, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't done so already. We're going to stay on for about 10 more minutes before we, we head off. And just a reminder, we will be covering the uh, the Manchester City game against Chelsea at the Eddie. Ha- no, at the Stamford Bridge, excuse me. I knocked my microphone over. That's why I'm throwing myself. Good catch, though. Uh, it was a good catch. It's goalkeeper, mate. You know what I mean? Cat-like reflexes. And we will be covering that game tomorrow on the channel as well. So make sure you've got your notifications turned on. And hit that subscribe button if you've enjoyed the stream. As you can see, we've gone past 39,000 subscribers with thanks to you amazing people. And we're on the road to 40k, which is what we want to get to by the end of the season. And we've also gone past 2,200 followers in Hot Mike as well. Thank you for that, Joanne. We'll be doing the game on both tomorrow and uh, on both channels tomorrow. And no Chris Dambol. When did Chris Dambol become a team, by the way? Did I miss out on this whole The name, Istanbul? like. Yeah. I think it's been around since the game happened. Maybe fair. I've just mentally blocked out that game <laughs> in my head. Uh, Mo Salah going to win the golden boot I don't think anybody's going to catch Verdi really how far that's 15 Premier League goals I think for Mo Salah this season Uh, class strings thank you very much up the reds appreciate that do I watch GAA yes I do I wouldn't be a massive fan Darrell but I do watch it Uh, Mo Salah going to win the golden boot good night people said Seamus Moore 
Um, what time am I streaming? What time is the game tomorrow? I haven't even checked what time it's the game is. Quarter past eight, I think, is it? Uh, I will tell you in two seconds. The game tomorrow is a quarter past eight game. So we'll be going live at about 7.45 on Hot Mike and on YouTube. So pick your poison, whichever platform you like. Mo is 17. Sorry, was it Sadio that had 15 um, then? Jamie Vardy is on 19. Salah, Aubameyang, 17. Aguero, Ing, 16. And Mane, 15. Oh, it was Mane. I just remember seeing the 15 come up when one of our players scored today. Sorry. Um, it's not the Mane. So Mo is 17. So he's two behind Jamie Vardy. Yeah. Danny Ings on 16. That's ridiculous. That's class though, isn't it? It yeah, is fair. class. I mean, if Mo doesn't win it, I'd love Danny Ings to go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it'd be nice. It would be a nice, uh, a nice return to glory for Danny Ings. But yeah, 17 for Mo. Sorry, folks. Again, thank you for pulling me up on that one. I appreciate your looking out there. See, this is why I love you guys. If I get something wrong, you guys are in there straight away helping me out and I do appreciate it. Um, Man United fan, but Fabinho was class at Luther Moss. Thank you, mate. He was brilliant today, and that goal was absolutely sensational. Uh, again, people just reminding us that Mo is 17, Vardy has 19. Yeah, it's possible. Thomas McGee said, I miss Newland. People do love that little dance. They really do. Bring him back next, soon next, for next watch song. We'll have him on. Uh, Lol's Beep said, I'm not feeling Gabriel Jesus. Gives me more confidence tomorrow than Aguero starting. Do you agree, Craig? I don't know. Gabriel Jesus has a knack of scoring goals, mate. Um, he reminds me more of a Bobby Firmino type in that he, I think he works harder than Aguero, but Aguero to me is a better natural poacher. And if I had to have one centre forward in their prime between them, I'm going with Aguero. Although, to be fair, Jesus hasn't hit his prime yet. so. Just to say as well, uh, the LFC Twitter account done a poll and Fabinho is winning with 62% from out of the match. Nice. So like Did you miles ahead. Our Twitter account? I didn't. So there's only points. It's just Fabinho, wasn't it? Yeah, but no, but that's the interaction, <laughs> mate. Just know what I mean. Yeah, so look, Fabinho absolutely running away with it on, on LFC's um, poll for Man of the Match, and it's good to see. I don't know how Sky gave it to Mo. I mean, Mo, don't get me wrong. God, that sounds bad. Mo put in a great performance, but I thought it was an easy choice for Fabinho today, personally. Yeah, he's way out ahead, I thought. Uh, who should Liverpool sign to PK17? Who Simoar would do me rather nicely, mate? Jaden Sancho would do me as well. Uh, I wouldn't mind. I like the links to David Alaba, I have to say. Uh, he's got one year left as Bayern Munich contract. Uh, we have been linked with him. He can play at left back, centre back. He can play in midfield. That's the type of player I think Kloppo loves as well. He loves a versatile player. We've also been linked with uh, Thiago as well today from Bayern Munich, who again has one year left on his deal. I don't know about that one, him being 29 years of age and all, if... if that's the type of player we'll be bringing in, but I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Everyone in my house keeps shouting, we're going to win the league, says Oliver Farish. Nice one. Happy house for you then, mate. It's not even we're going to win the league, it's just we have won the league. Uh, yeah, we're def- it's definitely happening. PK said, so what about Koulibaly? I'd love him, but I don't see it happening, mate. What, like I can't see us going out and dropping 70-odd million on a centre-back in this market. I just can't. Uh, Manchester City, though, had also been linked with Koulibaly recently. Salah was good, but missed a couple of sitters. Had Elijah John five. Um, what have we got? So did Fabinho though. Fabinho, what? I, I missed out on that one. I don't know what the original comment was, buddy. Do you think the Salah Sadio beef is over? There was never a Sadio Salah beef. That was all in just people's imaginations that wanted them to to have this beef between them. They are thorough professionals. Did you ever think that there was an actual beef between Salah and 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 Sadio? No. Like why would there be? Yeah, it was just... Do you know what I think it was? It was Mo Salah fans that were just having a pop whenever Sadio took a shot and didn't pass it to Mo because they wanted Mo to score a shitload of goals. I don't think there was any issue between the two of them whatsoever. And we've seen today, again, how unselfish Mo was. He tried to pick Taki out for a fifth goal um, when he could have taken the strike on himself. Is there a rumour about Adama? Not really. There's been some tenuous links to say that we're interested in him. I think that more comes from the fact that Klopp spoke very highly about him, said he was unplayable on his day. I uh, love your work, boys. Boom, baby, boom, said Storm Thomas. Thank you, mate. Really appreciate that, and I hope that you're well. Uh, Traore and Koulibaly said Niels Bradley would be his window of uh, choice. Brilliant free kick, said Dara Hendrik Kinsley with regards to Trent Strike. It was a belter, mate. Couldn't have placed that any better. Gave the keeper no chance. Ryan Newman's going for Chelsea to beat Manchester City by two goals to nil tomorrow. And Sam said, hey Craig, how are you feeling? I'm on top of the world, mate. I'm absolutely flying. Um, I hope that we do it tomorrow. I know people want us to win at the Etihad, but I just want it done and dusted. I just want to celebrate. And if we do win this title tomorrow, 
Although we're covering the game, we will be doing a reaction stream straight afterwards to celebrate. Don't worry about that. Uh, do you think Chelsea will finish higher than Man City next season? No. Not a chance they finish above Man City next season. Like if, Chelsea, if Man City get knocked out of the Champions League because of this ban, they get kicked out for a season or two, that's all they have to concentrate on is the domestic competition. So, uh, no. I don't see anybody getting there, Liverpool and City, Connor, for the foreseeable, if I'm being honest. Yeah, at this current rate, like his, like all them teams, Chelsea, United, Spurs, Arsenal, they're all at least three or four years behind Liverpool and City at this edge. Yeah, I mean, United, they look good today, in fairness to them, but I still think that they're lacking... It's just the consistency, yeah. They can't yeah. do it every week. And I don't, I still don't believe in Solskjaer. I just don't believe in him as a manager. Uh, Chelsea won the league for Leicester. Hopefully they can do it for us tomorrow, said Harry Graham. Uh, what are your opinions on Sonny? Yeah, my opinions are none, mate. Why do you... Camsy boy, you're a member of our channel. You're about two seconds away from being banned from the channel, mate. Why are you asking that question? I don't talk... I'm not going to give that man the airtime, mate, because he doesn't deserve it. I said everything I had to say on the stream with him. Um, yeah, mate, and look, I don't give a shit if you're a member. I've got no qualms about banning you from the channel. You know that that's a shithouse question to ask, mate, and you're just trying to bait me into saying something so you can go running like a little bitch over to another channel, and it's not going to happen, pal. I, I already destroyed him once. And I can happily do it three, four, five more times. But why would I bother? I'm here to, to spread positivity, mate. And you're here trying to be a whiny little bitch. Sorry, mate. It's not happening. Uh, right. What have we got? Alfonso Davies and Traore would be awesome. Who do you think will buy this summer? I honestly don't know, mate. I honestly don't know. Um, do you think we're going to make a sign of this summer, Connor? I think we will once we sell a few people. I'd say we'll get rid of like Wilson, possibly Gruwich, um, Just a few players like that. And maybe we'll bring something in for 20, 30 million. Yeah, well, I'd seen a few links actually. Actually, Marco Marco Gruyich was linked with a move to Munching Gladbach. Munching Gladbach for was it sixteen million? I think it was a loan with an obligation to buy for between fifteen and twenty million. I think it was. Yeah, so I don't know if you guys seen that rumor as well, but there is a rumor going around today that Marco Gruyich is of interest to Bruce Munching Gladbach. Uh, it would be a loan with an obligation to buy for somewhere between fifteen and eighteen million. Uh, will we win the league the next five years? I don't know, Owen, but I think we have more league titles in us. I mean, getting that first one in the bank is always the hardest one to do, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I've, I think... Well, I've always said is I, th I think we'll win at least like two or three out in the next five or six. It's a fair, fair show. Uh, right. Care Bear said, I think we'll bring in 70 million this summer from sales. Uh, right, what else we got? Joanne said, there's Google if anybody wants to know any more. I don't know what that's about, but we move on. Wolves over United for the Champions League spot at HKM 1000. I don't know. What is the league table like? I, I don't look past the, the first spot. Do you know what I mean? When you're top of the league. Uh, United Wolves are level on points. Manchester United above them on goal difference. So, yeah, it's all to play for there. Especially if um, if Man City get booted out and, and that fifth spot becomes a Champions League place. Wait, let me just go back up. I don't care if this lad's a member. That comment was shithouse. He's getting kicked out. Where is his comment gone? Do, do, do. Right. There we go. Yeah. Sorry, Camsy boy. I don't care that you're a member. You're gone now from the channel, mate. You might as well get on to, to uh, YouTube and cancel your membership because we don't want people like you on our chat, mate. Big day tomorrow, said Ryan Newman. Uh, we got to Wolves giving 70 million for Adama and Vinagre left back cover. Easy set and done, said Lols Beep. Yeah, look, Wolves are building something. They're building there. I mean... I can't believe, Conor, that they've only come up out of the Championship. How mad is that? Yeah, and they're already pushing for a potentially Champions League spot. Well, like, that's what happens when you have like that much money and good connections. Like Basically, every good Portuguese player was just off the Wolves. Yeah, and um, I, I can't believe that they managed to get Ruben Neves when they were in the Championship. That is mental. Yeah, I think that shocked everyone, to be fair. like That was just the most random move of all time. Look, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to say good night, and I will see you guys tomorrow for... The uh, Chelsea game against Manchester City. We're going to be starting from 7.45 on the channel. Thank you guys so much for your support as always. If you've enjoyed the stream, please do hit that subscribe button before you head off. Thank you to Connor for joining me as well. But most importantly, the Reds are within touching distance of that Premier League title. 30 years of hurt is about to come to an end. The only question left is, does it come to an end tomorrow? Or does it come to an end that the Eddie had? Or will it go on a little bit longer? On behalf of all of us, thank you for your support, ladies and gents. And up the mother fucking Reds. Love to you.